my presentation is called Eye Dominance and Rifle Shooting. In this presentation, I'm going to cover the concept of eye dominance and how it relates to competitive rifle shooting, a discipline that I have competed in personally for a number of years now. Something maybe some of you haven't heard about before. So, without further ado, I'd like us to start out with a little bit of an exercise. Raise your hand. And if I'm, I'm going to wager a guess that you probably raised your right hand, most of you. Most of the population is about 85% right-handed. And so a lot of the time when somebody says raise your hand, what are you going to do? You raise your right hand. Of course, I'm left-handed, so I raise my left hand. And I wanted to illustrate that your dominant hand is something that you just used a lot. It's like your favorite side of your body, you know, that uh, you just use your left arm, your left leg, you're more coordinated biologically with one side of your body or the other. Everyone knows this, um, but what a lot of people don't know is that you also have a dominant eye. Um, it's actually different than your dominant hand. It's a completely set, different set of genes, in fact. The uh, biologists would tell us that this is called a polygenic trait. And a polygenic trait is one that simply has multiple genes tied to it, so that your dominant eye is dictated by two or three separate genes, none of which are actually tied to your dominant hand. In fact, we have roughly about 15% of the population that is considered cross-dominant. I am one of those people. I am left-handed, very strongly left-handed, but I am right-eye dominant. And just like how your left-handed, your right-handedness, when I ask you to raise your right hand, if you're right-handed, that right hand goes up without even thinking about it. In the same way, having a dominant eye means that that eye is going to use a lot more light and have a lot more sharp visual acuity than your other eye does. And this probably is something that you haven't really noticed simply because you've always got both eyes open. You know, you just look around, I'll tell you, look up at eye dominance. You've got both eyes open, you can't really tell. However, there are some things that might require um, using one eye or the other. And cer certain visually difficult tasks might it suggest that you want to use the sharpest vision that you can. In my case, this would be in rifle shooting. This is an AR-15 service rifle outfit. I have I own one very similar to this that I have used to compete in for about 10 years now. And this is done using paper targets from 200 to 600 yards. And you're using iron sights on here, not a scope. And a close-up of these shows that these sights are fairly small and on the gun, and you have a little circular aperture that you look through, and a little post out here about the size of a pencil lead that you're trying to line these up. When you're on this gun, in here looking down range, your <coughs> excuse me, field, of, field of view looks something about like this. You have your aperture and your post that you're attempting to line up with a target that is down range. And so rifle shooters are attempting to line these things up as precisely as they can. And now this can be a fairly difficult task. For instance, let's just look at the target. Oh, wow. That is a big target, right? The standard NRA 600-yard target is almost six feet wide. This is roughly actual size here. The tendering is a foot across, so you've got a whole lot of real estate about this big, right? Well, that's true. If we go back and look at our site, though, you, you would imagine that lining these things up on such a big paper target would be pretty easy, right? Well, let's just say we don't shoot this target from this close. In fact, we shoot it from six football fields away. And at six football fields, 600 yards, it looks a little bit smaller, like a lot smaller. Here we have an actual 600 yard range. We have a shooter doing what I would do, the prone position. And your target is way down there. And that's what he is attempting to line his sights up on correctly.
directly. So you can imagine that when you're trying to shoot at that target from that far away, it could possibly behoove you to use your dominant eye. This became important to me when I began shooting, and I am very, very strongly left-handed. And I got into it, and my coaches knew the importance of using your dominant eye because it collects so much more visual information. Lining up those small sights becomes much easier when you're not having to struggle against not having as much vision as you need. So, because of that, I then had to learn to shoot a rifle right-handed as this gentleman is doing right here. And so, that was a bit of a challenge for me coming up, and so that is why I wanted to share with people about the concept of eye dominance. It's probably not something that will ever really affect you all that much, um, unless you decide to uh, pick up an AR-15 and join me out of the range sometime. However, I thought it would be a good idea, just now that since we've talked about it, let's find what your dominant eye is. And for this, all we need is a dot. Now for this, uh, if you're sitting close to your computer, uh, I need you to be at least arm's length away. And the way this is going to work is that you are going to sit back and look straight at the dot. I'll demonstrate and then we will go through it together. Your arms need to be at arm's length out in front of you and your palms will be up. And then what I want you to do while looking at the, the dot, staring straight at the dot with both eyes open, you will make a triangle hole in your hands with your hands all the way out. And then you will line <coughs> the hole up over the dot where you can still see the dot with your hands. Now, doing this, I want you to look at the dot and close your left eye. Can you still see the dot? If you can still see the dot through the hole with your right eye open and your left eye closed, congratulations, you are right eye dominant. If you can't see the dot with, through the hole with your, hand, with your right eye open, then close your right eye and reopen your left eye. And if you can see it now, you are left eye dominant. And if this may be surprising to you that you find yourself being left, -hand -eye, left eye dominant and right handed, then congratulations, you are one of a very small portion of people that is both right handed and left eye dominant. This is even more challenging because most firearms are made for right handed shooters. So, while you may never actually find yourself out on the rifle range, now you may have a better idea of how to find your dominant eye. Now finally, if this technique doesn't work for you, there's one more we can try. This one is very similar. Hands will be out in front of you. However, you're going to make a cup with your hand that is open at both ends, and this way you will line the hole up over the dot and simply, while staring at the dot, bring your hands closer to your face. And if you will notice, they track toward your dominant eye. They will naturally want to draw toward the eye of yours that is strongest. And the reason for this is because, like we said, let's go back to our beginning example. I say raise your hand, boom, you use your right hand right there. And so in the same way, when you start trying to do something that is visually demanding, it, your right eye or your dominant eye, whichever it is, is naturally going to be drawn to perform the lion's share of the task. So, now you understand a little bit more about the concept of eye dominance, and uh, hopefully you were informed by this presentation. Thank you for watching, and that is my presentation. Thank you.